First of all, um, my name is Luna and I am a nationally registered advanced EMT here in the state of New Mexico. I am also transgender. Um, throughout my career as an EMT, I have responded to, by conservative estimates, about 1,500 calls for service here in the state of New Mexico. I have treated more transgender people than I can count. Who will tell me that the support of the people in their lives makes a difference in their lives? And that's been my experience as well. My question for you is, despite all of these transgender people who tell me how great things are for them, I have never once treated somebody who told me that they regretted their transition. Never once, it hasn't happened. So where is this supposed epidemic of people regretting their transitions? I love the way that Matt just listens quietly, intently, gives respect to the person asking the question, absolutely. But he's just so stoic. I mean, his face, I wouldn't want to play poker with Matt. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, it's just, uh, you know, um, he just, uh, I mean, just take a look at this face here. He, he's wondering right now, you know, he's formulating an answer to this guy. How can I go, go ahead and let this person know with logic and reasoning that his thinking is just completely wrong. Let's hear Matt um, start to disassemble this person's image right now. Well, you could just ask them, are you, are you denying that they exist? I understand they exist. I haven't seen significant evidence okay. of it to nearly the same extent as people who tell me they're happy with their transitions. Okay, that, that's fine. You, you personally haven't seen them. Uh, I have, I talk to them all the time, so I know that they're out there, I know they exist. I also know that, um, I know a couple other things, I also know that the suicide rate, as we established, suicidality for trans people remains sky high even after transition, and I went over in the talk why all of the explanations for that, that somebody on your side of the discussion might offer, don't hold water, they don't work. Which, which tells us that there's something else going on, and which tells us that there's still a deep despair there. So those people who identify as trans, then they transition, and then they kill themselves, so a large number, they might not articulate, many of them may articulate this, but they might not articulate that they regret this. But even so, as they say, actions speak louder than words. And so it's pretty clear that there's something deeply wrong here. And it's also clear to me that if transition is supposed to make trans people happier, on a large scale, it's not working. And when you've got suicidality, uh, you know, rate of 50% or more. And this is so true. If the suicide rate among trans people is 50%, and if transitioning and getting gender affirming care, which I really don't like that terminology because it just basically, it just so who would be against gender affirming care? That would be like, you know, geriatric affirming care to elderly. Who would be against geriatric affirming care? Nobody. So it's these word salads, it's these word structures that are put together, you know, sound bite answers that sound good. But then when you ask people and say, so you, you want to put them on, um, medication that's being given to people that are child molesters and rapists. You want to give them puberty blocking drugs that will stunt their adolescence, their growth. And people go, no, that's, that's gender affirming care. And then getting back to the suicidality rate, if the transitioning, whether it's um, to, through uh, puberty blockers or through um, you know, top surgery or bottom surgery or transitional surgery, whatever it is, if that's supposed to make you feel better, why is it that 50%, up to 50% still commit suicide? There is something wrong. It's not freaking working. That's what Matt's trying to tell these people. That tells me that this plan for making this group of people who are 50% suicidal isn't working. I mean, if that's not enough to convince you, I don't know what else to tell you. And one other final point that I'll make as well. 
because we, we've all these t questions and I appreciate the questions. I appreciate that you guys at least are coming up to talk to me in most in most schools. They won't even do that. So I appreciate that. But all of these questions are about, well, this trans person says that they're happy. I say that I'm happy. Even if I were to concede that there may be some trans people who feel like they're happy. I think even then they're lying to themselves and there's a deeper despair there, which is what led them to reject their, themselves in the first place. But I could, I could just, we could put that entirely to the side because what I'd like to do is get back to the question of, is it true, okay? It might make a man, maybe there's a man out there who feels happier if we affirm him as a woman. Is it true though? Is it actually true? And I would say that the truth matters first before we get to the emotional questions. That's what it's, truth matters most, facts matter most, science matters most, biology matters most, all these things matter most, but above all, if you don't have truth, you don't have biology. If you don't have truth, you don't have science. If you don't have truth, you don't have facts. If you don't have truth, you have absolutely nothing. Truth must be absolute. It's not my truth, your truth, their truth, someone's truth. It is just the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll, th I'll throw it back to you. Biological male says that he's a woman, wants to be affirmed as a woman. Is it true? Is the, tr the claim that he's making about himself, is it actually true? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go back on that one again, okay? Let's, I, just, I, I just have to see that again in real time. And I would say that the truth matters first before we get to the emotional questions. So let's hear that question from Matt one more time and his response. I'll, th I'll throw it back to you. Biological male says that he's a woman, wants to be affirmed as a woman. Is it true? Is the, tr the claim that he's making about himself, is it actually true? Yes. Yes. <laughs> How? How do you know that? How would you define a woman? Because you've asked other uh, people up here to define how we would define a woman. How would you define a woman, Mr. Walsh? Uh, an adult human female. <laughs> and how don't trans people, how doesn't a transgender woman fit that definition? Because they're not, they're not female. They, they, they have, they have, you said that you are a biological male, correct? I said I'm transgender. Um, I might be intersex for all we know. About uh, almost as many people in the world are transgender as intersex. See, it brings up this intersex question all the time. And that's what happens. It's like when abortion people bring up the part about, you know, rape and incest and the babies, I mean, the mother being... Um, you know, the mother could die. What are you going to do then? So this is that same straw man that they bring up and go, intersex. Intersex is a medical situation. It is a genetic anomaly that occurs. It is not a, a part of gender. It is not part of the binary. But they bring it up to try to, you know, take the conversation in, into a direction that they want to be taken and say, well, what about intersex people? You know, they don't know what their gender is. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us in the comments below. I mean, in the comments below, let us know what you think. My final thought, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.